G'day guys, how's it going? I'm Aaron Whitnell, this is ACW Sport, and after all of the drama following the games on the weekend, the Premier League was back for week 17 during the week this time round, and there were plenty of shocks this week in particular. But we're going to start with the league leaders, Manchester City, who cruised to a very easy 4-0 win at Swansea. And the reason I'm starting with them is because Manchester City have now officially broken pretty much every record you can have when it comes to starting a season. Because Manchester City have set a new record. Firstly, for the amount of straight wins in a row, they have beaten Arsenal's Invincibles record, which is 14 straight wins in a row, which has been held since 2002. They have now won 15 games in a row, and it doesn't look like they're going to stop anytime soon, although Spurs will give them a challenge at the weekend. And I think Spurs will be extra up for it because City also took their record at the week, uh, this week as well because they have now made the best start to a season in English footballing history, beating Spurs' record that has stood since the 60s. So, uh, you know, City are just incredible, as we know. Um, Kevin De Bruyne and David Silva were unplayable once again, both getting on the score sheet. And Pep Guardiola, I mean, just to show how successful he's been, he now holds the record for the most consecutive wins in a row in each league that he has managed in. He started with Barcelona and won 16 games in a row with them. That's the joint record. But still, he's number one in Spain. He won a whopping 19 in a row with Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga. And, of course, now 15 in a row with Manchester City. So, yeah, what else is there to say? City, like I keep saying, it's going to take a miracle for them to not win the Premier League title this season. But they are playing football that is just on another planet. They are as good for me as his Barcelona side. But all that's missing is trophies. And that is what will, for me, eventually show whether or not this team are actually better than that Barcelona side. If they win trophies, they will be. But they're definitely playing football that you can count on a similar level, to say the least. Now onto the chasing pack. Manchester United, they picked up a 1-0 home win over Bournemouth. Romelu Lukaku back on the score sheet after his nightmare at the weekend in the Manchester derby. It was good to see him back on the score sheet. Very muted celebration for him, probably because, you know... He is probably low on confidence, which you can understand because the fans have been giving him so much stick. It wasn't his best performance, but I do hope that this is a new start for him you know, this season. And hopefully he can start scoring plenty of goals again um, because he is only young, as I did say in my last video. And I do want the fans to, to give him time. Um, Bournemouth gave it a real go, though. They were quite unlucky. They just kind of lacked the quality to get past David De Gea, but... Uh, at the same time, United, it was a fairly kind of routine win for them at Old Trafford. Martial with miss of the season, though, from like a couple of yards out. How he missed is beyond me because it's pretty much an open goal. And uh, Marcus Rashford, it was good to see him playing as well after you know scoring at the weekend with a phenomenal effort that hit the bar. But uh, yeah, comfortable 1-0 win for Man United in the end. And uh, they go into their game at West Brom, having bounced back following the defeat to City and just trying to keep any form of pressure on them as well. Chelsea are very much the same. They picked up a fairly routine 3-1 win at Huddersfield. Um, Pedro and Willian amongst the goal scorers for Chelsea. Um, wonderful finish from Pedro as well, his third. Oh, sorry, the third goal for Chelsea. Uh, once again, Hazard just pulled the strings and just tore Huddersfield apart. Um, Huddersfield gave it a good go and they pulled back a fantastic header um, through De Potre. But yeah, it was just uh, Chelsea going back to business following their uh, shock defeat to West Ham at the weekend. And again, just keeping themselves right on level points with uh, Man United there at the top, or at least you know a couple of points behind. Now onto the shocks for the other chasing packs, because Arsenal drew the second game in a row against West Ham, which was a massive shock. And if you had said to any West Ham fan three weeks ago, your next three games are against Man City, Chelsea and Arsenal, I doubt any of them would have said that they would have got any points based on their form going into those games. The fact they've come out of these games with four points is massive. And I'll tell you what, West Ham was so unlucky to not win this game, in my opinion, because Arsenal were okay, but, I mean, West Ham hitting the bar in the last minute through Hernandez, they really gave Arsenal a go, and they seem revitalised under David Moyes. And you know what it's like? Sometimes in life in general, you just need a bit of a change. And maybe that's what West Ham needed this season to help them kind of refresh themselves and really get their season going. But so far, David Moyes is doing a brilliant job for them. 
but a massively blown opportunity for Arsenal. Just as they've got themselves back above Spurs, they've blown it in some of the easier fixtures once again. And these are the fixtures that are really costing Arsenal. It's not when they're not getting the results against the big teams. It's when they're struggling to beat the teams that they are expected to beat comfortably that's really costing them. But uh, you can't just say it's Arsenal, though, because Liverpool also drew, this time at home, to West Brom. Um, they drew 0-0, just like Arsenal drew 0-0 with West Ham. Absolute shock. Um, and just when Liverpool, everything seemed to start to be going so well again, they're faltering. And uh, again, there's going to be more question marks over Klopp. But you just wonder whether or not that result at the weekend and the fact you dropped Coutinho might have had an effect on the squad in this game. But uh, we'll have to see if they can bounce back and try and catch up. Because it is now a catch-up job to United and Chelsea for me between you know, Liverpool, Arsenal and also Tottenham. But Tottenham, they won. They beat Brighton in a fairly routine 2-0 win at Wembley. Although Aurier um, won't score a luckier goal if you ever see it. His cross went straight in. Uh, his first goal for Spurs gets them back above Arsenal. Just as Arsenal fans are starting to enjoy the fact that they were back above Spurs. They've blown it in quite embarrassing circumstances, really. And Spurs are back above them easy peasy. But there isn't too much to really talk about from those games because they were, well, in Tottenham's case, it was routine. The Arsenal-Liverpool games, not really too much happened. They weren't, the, they weren't very good performances because the main talking point from this week isn't even Man City, really. It's the fact that Burnley are sixth. And for 24 hours, they were fourth. And that is because they are now above Arsenal on points in the Premier League table. And they are level on points with Liverpool and Tottenham. Absolutely incredible. Um, there's there's just not enough praise I have for the way Burnley are playing this season. Sean Dyche is doing an incredible job. And I really, really hope they stick to it. And uh, the fact they managed to win it in the last minute as well against Stoke to uh, get them up into that spot is absolutely phenomenal. I really do hope they get European football come the end of the season because they deserve it for the way they're playing so far. So let's hope they can maintain it. But uh, as for Stoke, another defeat. This has been a shocking season for them so far. and They're really going to have to turn it around soon if they're going to avoid any form of trouble in the new year. Um, and hopefully they can do that. Um, as for Newcastle, they, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. they actually lost again. Um, Everton under Sam Allardyce are a completely different team. All right, don't get me wrong. Newcastle, <coughs> they were very unlucky in this game. They hit the woodwork twice. Um, you know, Rockets as well. Um, but And the goal wasn't particularly great either from Rooney. But he is back on the score sheet consistently now. He's actually scored the same amount of goals this season as Lukaku. Um, which just shows form is temporary, class is permanent. And Wayne Rooney is class, without a doubt. But uh, yeah, Everton, they've got that bit between their teeth again. And Sam Allardyce has now got them winning even when they're not playing well which is always a good sign, and they're continuing to climb up the table. Another team that's continuing to climb up the table, and this must have been so satisfying for Claude Puel, is Leicester, because they beat Southampton at Southampton, the club who sacked him, because apparently he's not good enough to be their manager, 4-1 at St Mary's. And I tell you what, Claude Puel has got the real Ria Mahrez back. He has been phenomenal since Puel took over, and scored again in this game, another wonderful goal. Um, and yeah, it was just cruise control for Leicester. They were they were completely dominant over Southampton. Um, and Andy King got on the score sheet. And when you think it's 10 years since he scored his first league goal, which happened to be against Southampton, he scored again last night. Lovely little anniversary, I guess, in that sense. But uh, you've got to have a lot of respect for Andy King. The fact he played in every tier in English football is absolutely brilliant. Uh, but yeah, cracking win for Leicester. And i tell you what, it's going to be a really interesting race now between Leicester, Everton and Burnley as to who can potentially break into uh, the top six because I honestly reckon Leicester and Everton are right on the resurgence. And the way Liverpool, Arsenal and Spurs have been faulty recently does give them more hope. So you can understand why they're up for the games a little bit more. As for Watford, who just a few weeks ago were right in there with Burnley and, uh, and, and, and Everton and, and teams like that, They've completely dropped by the wayside. They threw away a one-goal lead in stoppage time to lose 2-1 at Crystal Palace. And once again, just before this all happened, they had a man sent off. And since the start of last season, they have had more players sent off than any other club in the Premier League, which is a record that you don't want. But you've got to give credit to Palace. They really have been digging in at Selhurst Park. And they are really starting to make it a fortress now. Uh, Wilfred Zaha is just unplayable at the moment. And uh, they, they deserved it. They really put pressure on Watford. And, uh, you know, fair play to Roy Hodgson because I really doubted him when he first went there. But so far, he's done a phenomenal job for Crystal Palace and he looks like he's really enjoying it. So 
it's going to be interesting to see just how, where he can take them this season because with the likes of uh, West Brom and also Stoke struggling now, Palace have got a real chance of getting out of that relegation zone. Um, it's just a shame that you know West Ham have also hit form against tough teams as well because that you feel could be a bit of a rivalry over the coming months. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, great win for them. And that pretty much sums up everything that happened in week 17 of the Premier League season. Do you agree with the points that I've made or any comments that I've had said? Please comment below, let me know. As always, I'm Aaron Whitnell. I'll be back tomorrow with my week 18 predictions. Um, so I guess I'll see you guys then. Until, ne until then, please don't forget to subscribe to ACW Sport. And I'll see you guys again soon.